All right, guys. Today we have a 2010 Nissan Sentra 2.0. This is a four cylinder engine and the car is misfiring. I scanned this car. This car has a code for misfire on cylinder number one. I believe the code is uh, P0301. I'll double check it, confirm it, and I'll post it below in the description. But anyway, um, so cylinder number one misfire. So this car in the morning, when it starts up, it starts up, you know, it, the engine is not stable pretty much. You see that? It's gonna try to die off, you know? There you go, it's dead. But the engine is misfiring. I can feel it in the car. And it's number one cylinder, so the engine is not in balance. So let me show you what we're gonna do, guys. If you have a similar car, 2010 Nissan Sentra. So number one cylinder is right here, guys. The coil pack is right down here, right? You could t I took off the bolt of this one. All right, this is the number 10 that I took off. And uh, so this is the ignition coil right below this pipe right there. And to get access to this, you do need to remove the intake manifold. So the intake manifold has one, two, three. It only has three bolts. Uh, yeah, only three bolts. This car probably also got a cover over here. I got it on the floor right there by the tire machine. Right, right now where my finger is. That's the cover that goes on top of this. It has one and two number 10s. And then it pops off right here. So two number 10s. And then it pops off from these, all right? All right, so we're gonna remove this intake manifold. This engine, this customer bought a car from a used dealer, which was terrible. So it's missing a lot of components, but so let's just go along. If you, you don't see something in this video, the car is missing. Probably some bracket is in the back. So what we're gonna do is, we're gonna remove this pipe. Uh, we're gonna, uh, you know, we're gonna remove this whole thing, disconnect this, and uh, we're gonna, this evap valve here, we'll disconnect the number 10s here. This whole thing will come apart. And uh, we're gonna remove the number eights of this throttle body. And we're gonna push the throttle body a little bit to the side. Right in back of it, there's probably one bolt which is connected to the intake manifold. And it's connected down to the engine. That's like a, usually a bracket it has in the back. That's what it got, so that's why I'm gonna take off that throttle body. But I'm not gonna disconnect any coolant pipes from that throttle body. We'll just push it to the side. And then there's hoses in the back. There's one hose from the brake booster connecting in the back and there's one over here we'll disconnect all that so let's get to it guys let me set up my camera and we're gonna start by removing the stuff on the throttle body all right guys so we're gonna start off by removing the two number 10s what i'll do is i'm gonna be using a lot of power tools but you can do it manually if i can't get an angle i'm gonna be doing it manually as well All right, guys, I have this. I'll disconnect the sensor there so it gives me enough free play just like that. I just want to mention, guys, do not remove the bolt of the throttle. I'm sorry, the, not the bolt, the, the connector on the throttle body, all right? And we're going to try to take as minimum things as possible because if you remove that bolt, it's going to lose its uh, calibration. I'm gonna need a deeper socket here, so I'll get a deeper socket. You guys seen this tool on my uh, uh, top five favorite tools? This tool is pretty good. On any light bolt, it's very handy, all right? I'm sorry about the wavy camera. My, I left my stand home to do a video at home. So I'm using this little hanger. Not a hanger, like a, uh, like a small selfie stick, but it's flexible. Hey right, guys. 
All right, so these are the two coolant pipes. We're not gonna remove that and we're not gonna disconnect the connector either. So there's our number 10 back there down here, all right guys? Let me see if I can get a better view at it so you guys can see. All right guys, you're not gonna be able to see, but there's a number 10 right here, right? right if you look right below this daughter body and that's holding this, uh, this intake manifold and uh, intake manifold to the engine block. So what I'll do is to access that, you do have to remove this daughter body, but that's all you need to do. So we're pretty much done with this section right here. Let me get a number 10 with the gear uh, ratchet, small ratchet, and I'll remove that bolt and I'll show you, I'll be right back. All right guys, I'm back. I got a number 10 on a ratchet. So here it is, I got more than enough room to work here. Let me just see if my ratchet is in reverse. All right, I'm not gonna be able to put a power tool there because it's very little space there. All right, guys. While you're watching my video, guys, please subscribe to my other channel. It's called the uh, Kaboom. You, you will see a link. All right, this, this bolt is not a joke. My God. The bolt was very tight, you know, it was into the aluminum, to the engine block. All right, guys. So we're going this far deep, you know, th this car is not so easy to work on. You only got access to one coil and you can't even test any of the injectors. I don't know why they designed such a thing, you know. So what if we do this, you know, and then we find out that wasn't the problem because this, this is like an educated guess, you know, the computer guides you misfire or number cylinder one. So you don't know if it's a spark plug, a coil, but you do have to take this step, right guys? To at least do the tune up. This car probably never got a tune up, right? And also, if you're gonna get a surprise, it might have a leak. So there's a number 10 bolt, all right? It might have a leak, internal leak into the spark plugs itself. All right, guys, I got that out. So let's move over to this side. Let me bring my camera to this side. So we know what we're doing over here on this side. And all right, guys, so we're gonna go right into the back of this intake and we're gonna remove this hose right here. This is the brake booster vacuum line. And guys, I'm gonna urge you guys when you put this back together, make sure that line is there, right? Because if it's not there, the car is not gonna stop, right? Because that booster works off the vacuum of the engine. And be careful, do not break this, the neck, because this is intake is plastic and I'm pretty sure it's not gonna be cheap. All right, so this, if you break this piece, forget about it, guys. All right, so there it is. I have the pipe off, and then uh, I'll take off. Let me bring my camera up. This is flexible, so I can move it around wherever I like, guys. So let me leave this right here. This is a good angle for me right here. We're gonna remove this hose here. This goes through the PCV valve. Softly, gently, guys, all right? All right, so I got this out of the way. Why is it not coming out? Okay, there you go. So it's around this, under this, all right? So it goes to two different pieces. Well, we're gonna let that stay there. It's gonna go off with the intake manifold. And we got a small little vacuum line in the back there. I'm gonna remove that also. This is the vacuum line right here. I'm gonna leave it together because that's very flexible and we should be able to move this out of the way. All right guys, I don't see anything else in this intake and uh, I don't see nothing in the back. I'll put my hand over mine back here. But this might have something down there, but once it's up, we should be able to see. Or right, anybody probably got like a hose or something back there. Oh, one more hose. So bring my camera over this way now let me 
set it up right here. All right, guys. So what I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna take off these intake bolts. All right, this, remove this dipstick so you have a little bit extra room. Just put it right here, make sure you put it back. All right, this is long number 10 on it. All right, I'm gonna go get an extension because there's quite a bit bolts in there. It's just not three, there's uh, four and five, all right? And also guys, let's do this. Remove these little brackets because they're blocking the view. Make our soft easy, all right? All right guys, if these bolts are different length, make sure you keep the motor. So these two are the same. I'm not worried about those two. And this one down here. All right, that's how intake move, so it's loose already. All right. All right, and then you got a nut on this side. And then I gotta go get number 12 because there's a number 12 on this side. I'll be right back, all right? Just stay there, guys. All right, I got my number 12. And let me put this off and let me swap the socket. So this is 12 right here. Like I said, this car came from dealer, so I don't even know if this was supposed to be 12 there or 10 there, or whatever. All right, guys. Now, we just need to take this intake out of its place. And there we have it, guys. We have access to everything, all right? You see that? The intake is out of the way. All I did was I lifted it up. And I put the intake to the side just like that, all right? All right, guys, I know a lot of people are gonna comment me and um, there's supposed to be seals here. Intake seals, make sure nothing goes in there. There's dirt, just be careful. But I'm doing a job as this requested by a customer, so I don't know if he wants everything. I did call him and I told him we should be replacing the gasket here. And he only agreed to, instead of changing just the coil, he agreed to change the spark plugs. And that's it, all right? So that's what he wanted. So, very easy job, right guys? So let me pull off this coil. This is number one, cylinder number one, guys. And this is the one that's misfiring. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take this coil and I'm gonna put it to the side so I do not mix up with any other coil. All right, guys? And, uh, I'm gonna take a small break and I'm gonna come right back. All right guys, so I hope you guys can see very good. Yeah, there you go, that camera looks good. So I took off the first coil, I threw that coil to the side. I want nothing to do with it. And I'm gonna remove the other three coils. All right, now let me get my number 10. My number 10 is on this side. All right, when you open this guys, make sure you don't drop anything. All right, if you need to blow some air in there, and this one looks pretty clean. I blow air, I mean blow air before you take out the plugs. Don't blow afterwards, all right? So these, if you want, you can keep them in order. Just put them facing this way. Don't put it facing towards the windshield. Sometimes you can break the windshield by just putting something on it because you forget and then you close the hood. All right, I think we're going to have a problem with this one right here. I have to order another coil. Uh, it came out. And there's a, see there's a, like a spring in there which makes the spark travel. I'm not even gonna disconnect that, all right? You could just leave these hanging if you like, just like that. All right, next, what we're gonna do is we're gonna remove the spark plugs. Just take a quick look, there's nothing in there. 
So to remove these plugs, you're gonna need a number 14 socket. This is a snap-on. All right, so number 14 here. All right, I'm gonna get another extension. So it's a little higher, and I'll be right back. All right, guys, I'm back. And what I'm gonna be doing now is I'm gonna loosen all these. Once they're loose, you can turn them out by hand. All right, I hope I'm not blocking the light from the camera. So I just moved it to another angle. Make sure you put your hand in when you turn it. Don't just turn it like that, because you'll break the spark plug, especially when you're tightening it. All right, guys, and make sure you do torque it. If you need torque specs, just message me. And please subscribe my channel. A lot of you guys watch my videos, but you guys don't subscribe, you know. And please do me that favor, just subscribe. If you have any questions for any other repairs, just ask me, you know, if you have check engine codes, just send me that message, you know. I'll go to my shop the next morning if they, you message me a little late. And I will get that information for you. At least it will give you an idea where to start. You know, if you send me a code like this, 301, P0301, I believe this is 301, I'll just, like I said, I'll put it in the description. And if, let's say if it's a cylinder number misfire, I can tell you at least which cylinder number one is misfiring, which one is the number one cylinder. All right, guys, I got all the plugs loose. All right, if you have a socket that able to pull these plugs out, good. If you don't, you're gonna need a magnet. All right, if you don't have a magnet, just take your coil, dip it in there. And it will pull out the plug for you, right? And so there it is, right? There's the plug. So this is wet. You see that? That plug is wet. I'm gonna put this right here, right? So you guys can see. Let me put it right here. Let me pull out another plug. The second one. Let's see what it looked like. You see the difference? This is the plug from the cylinder number two. Look at the difference. This is wet. This is dry. This is burning gas. This is not burning. Number one cylinder is not burning gas. So it has gas, but it's not burning gas. So what that means, the coil that we pulled off, one of these coils is bad, all right? This is a wet plug, all right, guys? So I'm gonna put this to the side. And let me get a magnet so I can show you how to do it with the magnet. Guys, here's a magnet. I put fire to this magnet, so I don't even know if it's gonna be strong enough. Yeah, it's not gonna be. It's not strong enough, but I got this one out. So this is dry as well. This plug. Let's compare this one to this. The for number one cylinder. You see the difference? It's wet. All right, let me let me tap my camera to see if you guys can see it. The one to the right, this one right here that I want to shaking right now is number one cylinder. You see the difference? One is wet, one is dry, all right? This is this one right here is from cylinder number three. So now you can see a difference between wet and dry, all right? Oh, that, that, that one was from number four because it's number three I could not get out, right? So my magnet is weak. I just remembered I put fire on it, right? So let me see if this is loose enough anyway. But... If you don't have a magnet, you can do that, all right? So this is dry as well. All right, three spark plugs dry, three wet. All right, I'm gonna get my spark plugs. All right, guys, I got a box of spark plugs. There's four plugs in here. So I'm using this laser iridium plugs. These are NGK, all right? Let me see if you can, guys can see it right here. Laser Iridium NGK, and there's a part number on this uh, 5118. All right, that's the part number. All right, guys, give me a moment. I'm gonna take out these plugs and then we'll continue the job. The plugs usually gonna come like this in a pack, so if you these are pre gapped, so we don't need to gap them. Let me take the other three out. All 
right? Yeah, it's almost getting there, all right? We're almost half done. So here's the plugs that I have in my hand. All right, spark plugs on a 2010 Nissan Sentra. Whenever you're replacing spark plugs, make sure the threads are the same, the depth and everything looks same, all right? So these look pretty much same. So what we're gonna do next is, we're gonna slowly with the finger just drop, not drop, slowly, gently slide it in there. You know, you probably drop like a like an inch in there. You don't wanna just toss it, because if you hit this, you're gonna damage that tip, because these are pre-gapped, all right? And if that tip closes, it's gonna misfire, you know, because it's not gonna have no spark in there. It's gonna be, uh, it's gonna be a closed loop. All right, so once you drop them in there, you're gonna hand tighten these, meaning snug them all the way. All right guys, I'm gonna be torquing these off the camera. Usually I need my good space and I don't wanna be bothered. All right, I'm gonna show you the torque wrench that I'm gonna be using today. And then I'm gonna go inside, look up for information. I'm gonna torque them. See how, how much torque it needs. And then we'll come back and we'll finish up the job. All right, guys? So I got all of these. All right, guys, so I'm gonna be using a torque wrench such as this. All right, these plugs probably not too much of probably 18 to 27 a foot pound. And what this allows me is uh, to torque these, ball, these spark plugs and then it will click and let me know that it's tight enough, all right? So you do need to use a torque wrench. All right, I do use it on most most of my job, pretty much all of them. All right, sometimes you can't get a torque wrench into it. Sometimes it's rusted, there's no point of torquing. All right, so I'll be right back. Let me do this and then I'll come right back. All right, guys, welcome back. I torqued these plugs and it's all ready to go. All right, guys, so next, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna be putting these coils in. Just make sure you don't put the coil that's bad. All right, so what do we have here? All right. And do not mix up these connectors. You know, you could connect this one there, this one there. Now that's gonna be bad at the elbow, so mess fire, all right? So make sure you get the connectors at the proper place where they belong. And again, like I said, make sure you do not drop anything in there, all right? If you drop something, good luck taking it out. And if you forgot, if you didn't see it that it dropped in there, good luck replacing the engine, but try not to get to that point, all right, guys? That will be a bad idea. You know, you will message me. I wouldn't know what to tell you. All right, so like I said, keep the connectors in order. This one I never took out. All right, guys, there it goes. And make sure you connect these things, all right? Because if you forget, you're gonna be in trouble, all right? So let me get the lad, the new coil that I'm gonna be putting. All right guys, just hang on tight. And I got my new coil right here. This is the brand that I could get for this car and the part number right in the back. You can read it for yourself, all right? There's a whole bunch of numbers. There you go, all right? So, let me unbox this. It's not easy. Okay, it comes out this way, all right? There's the box, it comes nicely wrapped, and there's the coil, all right? It has a part number, make sure you're putting the correct, so make sure the part number is the same. All right, so we're gonna drop this in, and we're gonna connect this also. All right, make sure the connector didn't click. Make sure it clicks, all right, guys? There you go, all right? Make sure the rest of them are clicked in, and that's it, guys. Now this coil is ready to go in. And make sure you tighten these bolts. Don't forget this vacuum line, all right? That's for the brake. If you forget that, you're not gonna have brake, you're gonna have accident. I've done that a long time ago. I think it was uh, like a big Ford truck or, or GMC truck. That was when I first became a mechanic. The shop manager told me to do a fuel injection on the car. 
and uh, but outside I don't know what kind of injection it was but we usually take off the brake line from that end and we'll connect the like injection thing to it it'll suck everything in there and uh, then they told me to move the car and I forgot you know <laughs> I had this thing loose and the truck almost hit the wall but I got lucky that day all right guys so this is done this is tight this is tight this is tight this is tight the connectors are all in confirm it make sure it all right so I'm gonna take my camera a little bit back now I'm gonna take this intake manifold and I'm gonna just bring it over just like that it should be easy for me to put all right just make sure that gasket in the back of this intake where the intake the intake gasket is in place all right so these three bolts that we took off they're all the same size but guys make sure you catch the threads first all right don't just put a tool on and start turning it we got one nut we got two nut so this is how you're gonna do a tune up and if you need to do a ignition coil, if you have a check engine, you have to go through the same process. All right, guys, so I'm gonna tighten these bolts. Make sure you tighten them in order, like a sequence, so that way the intake manifold gasket just squeezes out. It doesn't take a scientist, you know. A lot of people will message me, oh, you didn't do it this way, this way. Everyone has their way, guys. And I'm sure you have your way. And this is my way, all right? So tightening these, I'm not gonna put a power tool on. I'm gonna do it manually, all right, guys? And I'm not, don't think, you know, I didn't torque it, but you know, I gotta do it with my best of my ability. Mechanic has a feel, you know? I'm not gonna lie to you guys. There's some mechanics out there. There's the YouTubers. They will tell you all kinds of stuff. But I'm sure some of you guys don't have a torque wrench. Just tighten it to your best ability, you know. If you think this is where, and make sure like I'm holding this ratchet. And uh, the, the both ends, I'm holding it like that. So I'm not letting this end, you know. If I do it like that, it's going to try to push one direction. Alright, I have that in, guys. And now I can tighten the two edge bolts. 10 and then I gotta swap my socket for number 12 there you go guys I had this thing in there I'm glad I have it in there oh don't forget you know like this connector almost stayed in this is for the valve up here all right so next let me move my camera more closer let me bring my light closer. Don't forget to put the number 10 bolt right here, right? It's in a little tight spot, but I'm sure you can manage it, you know? You see how I'm moving this? You can move this intake a little bit, it's flexible. Don't just break it either, you know? All right, once you catch the threads, you can put the ratchet on. Alright, I caught the threads. I'm gonna put my ratchet on with the number 10. At this point, you guys probably are thinking, you know, I should be putting in that vacuum line in the back. Don't worry, I'm not gonna forget. I'm gonna keep reminding you guys till the end, till this video is over. Alright. Again, guys, do not disconnect the connector to the throttle body, alright? Very critical because you're gonna lose memory and the car is gonna go crazy after that. You probably have an RPM problem after that. All right, so we're going to take the number eight. Make sure the gasket is in. The gasket don't look so good, but I did tell the customer, you know, these little, little gaskets. It's not even too much once we have it apart. I'm not going to be charging the guy, you know, like 140 bucks just to change this gasket. I'll probably add a couple of bucks, probably $10, $15 more. Because I do have to remove it from the place, and I do have to order the part in. All right.
right guys, I got all these in and I am gonna be using my power tool at this point because this is like a ratchet. All right, just a little bit. Let me find the back one. Snug it. Snug it. Snug it. All right, and then I can just use this as a gear wrench. I mean, a ratchet and just tighten these. That's why I love this tool, you know? And that's it, I think that should be enough, all right guys? And I did take off the intake uh, air duct pipe here, which had a vacuum line connected to right here. That one, I don't know if you got it on the camera or not, but I think I took that out yesterday. All right guys, so far so good, all right? And this thing comes over like that, and then you have the two number 10s that belong here. All right, I'll use my power tool there. There you go, guys. And do not forget the connector, all right? All right, let me put this up below it because I think that's the best routing for it. All right, and while I'm here, I am going to put this pipe in. So all you do is you just maneuver this around. And you get the duct pipe on. And again, you're gonna need number eight there. Let me swap my sockets. I hope you guys liked my video and I hope this helped you guys. All right, and don't forget this vacuum pipe here. I'll put the thing in, in a little bit. All right, I got that in. This one's lit it out. There you go. Let me straighten it out. Should be enough, guys. All right. So we have all this in. And guys, we're going to go back over to this side. Like I said, I did not forget. And I'm going to keep reminding you guys. Let me get my light. There's my light. Do not forget this little vacuum pipe, all right? For the brake. Very important and critical. All right, guys. And do not forget the clamp on the top, all right? And when you start this car up, make sure you let the engine build some vacuum. All right, and then we gotta guide this pipe because it's just enough length for it to reach. To, for it to reach the PCV valve. All right, there you go. And the job is well done. If you guys have any questions. Guys, before I close the video, again, don't forget that brake booster line. All right, the vacuum line. All right, so the car is done and complete. I put the cover on and this is the two number 10s I probably didn't show you, so that's how the cover comes out. All right, guys. So I'm gonna crank this car up. It should start up a lot better. The check engine is probably still on, but we gotta reset that. There you go. All right, guys, it starts up beautiful. No more misfire. The idle doesn't drop anymore. So there you go. That one number one cylinder misfire is gonna cause a lot of trouble, all right? It's gonna be a weak start. All right, guys, thank you. Subscribe. Again, don't forget that brake booster line. And bye-bye. See you on the next one. Please message me and please subscribe my channel. Thank you for watching and I'll see you on the next one. And again, before we leave, don't forget the dipstick that goes back in. Don't forget the two letter brackets that goes right here. That goes right here. And 
Definitely don't forget that vacuum line for the brake boost. All right, guys. Bye bye. Thank you and subscribe.